Shalom, and welcome to the Old City of Jerusalem. Um, I do want to do a very short thought. I want to focus on this week's Torah portion and a lesson we learned from it. Uh, the Torah portion is Truma, Parashat Truma, Exodus 25.1 to 27.19. Um, and I want to focus on a great lesson that is taught here. This is the Torah portion that talks about the building of the tabernacle. And we know something very powerful that we need to always remember. In every soul, in every soul, in Hebrew the word for soul is neshama, in every soul there's a spark. In every soul there's a whisper of the breath of Hashem. The word for breath is nishima. That breath of Hashem, the breath of God inside of us is our soul. And that's a spark that moves us forward and upward. So what's the secret of, of that process? What, what, what does that? What ignites that spark? What gets us moving forward? So the Torah portion of Truma, as we said, talks about creating the tabernacle. And then we hear God saying the following, Exodus 25, 8. They shall make for me a sanctuary, and I will dwell amidst them. Not in the tabernacle, I will dwell in the midst of them. The Midrash tells us that God wanted a sanctuary in, in the physical world. He is everywhere. But he wanted a place of involvement in the natural world he created. That's a great mystery because, as we know, he exists everywhere. The angels declare in Isaiah 6, 3, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh is Hashem, holy, holy, holy is Hashem of hosts, Hashem Tzvakot, the whole earth. The whole earth is full of his glory. So how can we take something how, how does the infinite God relate and get himself involved in the, in, the, in the finite world we are living in? And not only that, King Solomon asks the same question in 1 Kings 8, 27. Is it, will God really indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, when he was asked to build or he was beginning to build a temple, behold, the heaven and the heavens, heaven cannot contain him much less than temp this temple that I've created. Then what is that formula of taking the infinite and bringing it down to the finite? How does that work? To understand, we have to ask another powerful question. Why does Hashem want a house to be built for him when Hashem knows that it's going to be destroyed? More than that, why did Hashem plant Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden knowing that they were going to be kicked out and sent to the world? Uh, continuing. Why does God create man and woman as one separates them? If they're needed to be separated, it's not, not good for man to be alone. Why does he separate them? Why did he create them in the first place and separate them? To answer all of these questions relates to one powerful spiritual force in the universe, the power of yearning. The world is built along a framework where Hashem shows perfection and then hides it. Where paradise is revealed and then lost. The Garden of Israel, man and woman are created as one and then they are separated. He reveals himself in the power of glory in the exodus of Egypt and then he goes into hiding. First and second temples are built in experience and then they are lost. Spiritual existence is that the yearning to reveal that which was hidden and find that which was lost. It is that spiritual force of yearning that fixes the world and restores the world to its purpose. God created a world where we provide need and imperfection and then fire up the yearning to achieve that perfection. A deeper level is found in the wonderful, powerful statement of the Rebbe of Kotsk. Where's God to be found? How do you find God? His answer to that was that he is found in the place where he is given entry. Meaning his presence is everywhere, but if we don't allow him to enter in, if we don't make room for him, he's not experienced. We don't make room for him in his, our awareness. Therefore, since all things go, belong to God, we need to understand the following declaration. Speak to the children of Israel and have them take from me. Everything belongs to them. Take from me an offering. For every pers person whose heart inspires him to generosity, you shall take my offering. Exodus, Exodus 25, 25.2. How can mere mortals bring an offering if, in fact, all things belong to Hashem in the first place? What can they give to God? He already is the master of all. 
Because they give it from every person. What Hashem is asking is that heart. From every person whose heart inspires him to generosity. He doesn't need the thing. He needs our heart. He needs us to make room in our heart to want him to dwell within us. When the people were inspired to yearn to bring Hashem an offering, that heart that was inspired, that's where room was made for Hashem to dwell within. It's that yearning that mortals use in order to bring Hashem into our reality. That is the meaning of the verse. Make for me a sanctuary, and because of that, I will dwell amidst you. So learn to yearn. Learn to prepare yourself to be a vessel. And at that point, Hashem fills it and finds a sanctuary within our own souls. Shabbat shalom, and we will speak again after Shabbat.